Hello and welcome back to another episode of this week's watches and this week we have 12 incredible watches for you guys and girls as always every single Saturday that is what we do at 9 30 a.m so if you are new here down in the description you'll see every single watch listed there that we're looking at today there'll be a timestamp, so you can skip to that specific watch let's say you're here just to see the Seiko you can do exactly that there's also a link to the website where you can go view more photos, see additional details, and we really get into all of the core details there. Obviously, we touch briefly on the watches here in this video, um, but everything else is covered in great detail there for you. I do also want to say we have a huge amount of watches not yet on the website, and I am talking three or four drops ahead of where we are right now, which is insane. So head over to Instagram, at kibblewatches, and you'll see a coming soon highlights reel. On that highlights reel is all of the watches not yet on the website. They're all available to purchase now, so you can do so uh, nice and easily through that route. And before we get onto the watches on the table, what is on wrist? I'm wearing, I think, the watch I wore last episode, so I do apologize. That is the Pinion. Uh, this is a very, very cool limited edition of 25, part of the personal collection and not for sale with this gorgeous red Gillashay dial and the devil on the back, a really cool um, illustration and something that's uh, definitely inspiring potential future tattoos, so very, very cool. But that's what's on wrist. I'd love to know down in the comments what you're wearing uh, watch-wise at the moment as you watch this. And as always, at the end of the video as well, let me know what's your favorite in this week's drop. I always look forward to reading uh, what was your personal pick. So let's crack on with what you're here to see, and we're gonna start with this gorgeous 18 karat gold Ebel Beluga QP Perpetual Calendar 36 millimeters on its original strap with gold buckle. A beautiful, beautiful watch. Highly complicated and an absolute bargain at the price as well. So let's take a closer look. So starting this week off with something undeniably special and that's this gorgeous Bell QP Automatic Beluga in 18 karat gold with that perpetual calendar you can proudly see presented on the dial. Now this is a reference 8129960 from circa 1990 with its box and swing tag and original strap with its deployment buckle that the leather uh, interestingly slides underneath. So you see the gap there, the leather slides underneath making it one seamless piece of leather on the wrist and tucks that bit underneath which is a really nice way of doing it. You can see remnants of the sticker still present on the case back with all of the, um, the numbers and numerals and everything clearly visible right there so this watch I don't believe has seen a polish wheel and if it has it's been done very well and very lightly. Now interestingly the Beluga range was not particularly that popular uh, for Ebel when it was released originally so there's far less of these models than some of the other ones we are obvious, obviously well aware of like the uh, El Pomero models and things like that there's far less of these which in my opinion makes it more interesting especially with the case shape and the thinness of the strap uh, and being a 36 mil case with a hidden recessed crown right there as you can see I just think it it creates some more allure on the wrist and something that I think a lot of people are going to stop and go what on earth is that you know there's clearly a story here with a watch like this. Now, um, behind this screw down case bag, there's an automatic Abel caliber 129, which is essentially a modified ETA 2892 2, so a great movement inside with all of that complication. You can see continuous running seconds uh, with the hour and minute hand right there, nice applied indices, and the Abel logo sort of embossed into the dial. Um, it's certain lights, you don't even see it there, and that's just confidence of branding, which very few brands sort of have today, in my opinion. So continuous running seconds, you've got your day of the week over at the nine o'clock, your date of the month over at three o'clock, and your month of the year, as well as leap year, at 12, uh, and obviously can't forget that moon phase at six o'clock beautifully done, beautifully executed with pushes throughout the case to change all of the functions as required. Um, yeah, you cannot go wrong with a watch like this, especially at this kind of price point. But that's enough talking, let's show it on wrist and talk dimensions. And here we go on my seven inch wrist. What a unique and interesting wearing experience with a watch like this. This kind of shape and this kind of strap, it's, uh, it really is something to behold. And what I would say with regards to strap, Bell may have some left. You'd have to contact them for further details, but there is a strap tailor who would make a strap for this watch. And obviously any sort of custom strap maker will be able to do so. But this is 36 mil by 41 mil lug to lug, 10 mil on the thickness and nine mil at the entrance of the lugs tapering out 
Um, really, really wonderful thing. So definitely go check it out on the website today. From there over to an unpolished Rolex Cellini from the 1990, specifically August 1990. And this comes with its box and paperwork plus receipts. And as I say, unpolished, original strap, original 18 karat gold buckle. It is gorgeous. If you're after a, a nice gold dress watch and why not go over to Rolex Cellini, the price point of this is insane in my opinion for what you get. So let's take a closer look. Now for a Rolex Cellini, as you can see right here, beautifully executed with a sort of champagne golden dial, two hands, applied indices, and the Rolex crown at 12 o'clock. Doesn't get much more simple than this. And I think that's what Rolex, in my opinion, did so well with the Cellini line back in the day, was it was simple, elegant, and beautiful. It wasn't overly complicated. They weren't trying to add all this crazy quirks to it. And obviously that came with time, but I think they absolutely nailed the Cellini back um, back in this era. Uh, let me know down in the comments what you think. But this is a reference 5112 forward slash eight. It is unpolished, as you can see. Um, if I can get the camera to get in focus, really, really nice case overall. Hallmark, super visible throughout. Nice Rolex crown right there, which you don't see often, this little uh, Rolex crown. Often they're replaced. Now, as we flip it over, you can see the numbers. Clearly visible right there, and just beautiful case, beautiful case throughout. Original Rolex strap um, right here, which is genuine crocodile, I believe, as you can see, like a glossy dark brown crocodile. An original 18 karat gold Rolex buckle with hallmarks all clearly visible as well as you'd expect. So a wonderful example. And what makes it even more special in my opinion is the fact it's from August 1990 with its box and paperwork. So it comes with that as well as the receipts. So a really beautiful set. Inside is a manually wound Rolex Calibre 1601, um, which is essentially like a modified ETA, a very, very good and easily serviceable movement for the future, which is always nice. So let's show this one on wrist and talk dimensions. And here we go on my seven inch wrist. Do not be turned off by the size of this one on dimensions because it wears incredibly well. This is 32 mil by 38 mil lug to lug, only 5.5 mil on the thickness. So incredibly thin and 18 mil at the lug. So endless options for swapping this one out. Um, so yeah, go check it out on the website today. From there, we're gonna go over to Ming with a 1709 in blue. These are always great watches. They did the blue and the burgundy. I often have them in. Uh, this one is in wonderful condition and it comes with the big Ming tray. You'll see that over on the website with the additional photos. Um, it's like a nice leather tray that you can obviously put your watches on if you wish or keys or anything like that. It's just nice that it comes with that. So let's take a closer look at this. Now one. onto a Ming and arguably a Ming that I often refer to when people ask, you know, what, what is the quintessential Ming. I say the 1709 in burgundy or blue because it's just the watch I think of when I think of Ming personally, that sort of really subtle fine guilloche on the dial, the raised indices and the iconic hands. Everything about this is a Ming and again, as we were discussing earlier, very few brands nowadays have the confidence to let the design speak for the brand. Often brands will have to plaster their logo as big as possible on the dial, whereas Ming have just incorporated it beautifully as an indice at three o'clock. And I just think that shows confidence in design. You know, you look at a Ming, you know it's a Ming. It doesn't have to plaster it everywhere, which I really like. The iconic Ming case with the short lugs and super curved um, ends to the lugs, as you can see, and a nice polished bezel. Ming sign crown at three o'clock right there and sign screw down case back with everything stated right there. Inside is an automatic Salita SW330.M1 and this watch is from August 2022 with its box and paperwork. It comes with two straps. It comes with this Ming unworn uh, lighter blue strap and another strap in the box as well. Um, and the Ming tray, which I mentioned at the start of uh, the intro for this. Um, nice leather tray, very, very usable for your watches. You know, if you're changing straps and things like that, or you want to put them in the safe on a tray, you know, by all means, there's some great options for that tray to be used. So let's show this one on wrist and talk dimensions. And here we go, rest it against my seven inch wrist as that clasp uh, or buckle, sorry, is still stickered. I'm going to rest it against the wrist. Um, this is 38 mil by 44 mil lug to lug, so super short lug to lug length, 10 mil on the thickness and 20 mil on the lugs are endless options um, but I do really enjoy the Ming straps I think they're fantastic so go check this watch out on the website today now let's go over to some Tudors we're going to start with the Tudor Black Bay Pro GMT a very very gr uh, good watch based on an old uh, Rolex Explorer 2 um, which is definitely what I get reference wise like an original 1655 Steve McQueen gorgeous watch so let's take a closer look now to the Tudor Black Bay Pro if you're after a GMT with heritage flair, 
I wouldn't look too much further than this, especially for the price point. I think it ticks a lot of boxes from a brand like Tudor and it just offers a huge amount. And the price of these comparative to retail is insane in my opinion. So some really good deals to be had out there like this one. So this is a reference 79470 from December 2022 with this box and paperwork and it comes on its original strap. The watch is worn, it has been used and enjoyed and we can always have it refinished if you would like on request. Obviously send us an email, we can get you a quote of how much that would cost and a rough time frame that would take to complete. But as always, I say get the watch first, wear it for a bit and see if it really bothers you that much because oftentimes we don't realize that, you know, well, for one, a watch is going to get scratched. You're wearing it on your wrist. It's not meant to stay perfect and two, you know, sometimes you look at your own watches and don't register the scratches because you're always looking at it. Whereas when you're looking at a new watch to buy, if it's got a few scratches, they're instantly recognized in your mind as like, oh, there's scratches there. And I get it. But once you get it on wrist and have worn it for a day or two, oftentimes you forget they're even there and it doesn't bother you. So save yourself that extra cost, in my opinion, and just enjoy the watch as it is. But of course, if you want that done, we can always have it done for you. Uh, so just let me know. Now, inside this behind the closed case back right here is an automatic Tudor Caliber MT562. Um, and yeah, you really can't go wrong with this watch at all. It has the nifty little glide adjust on the clasp, uh, as you can see, to make um, sort of sizing it on the fly nice and easy, especially with summer coming up. Um, you can move that around and get that perfect fit. Not a huge amount more to say on this watch. It's a great watch, especially for the price. So let's show on wrist and talk dimensions. And here we go on my seven inch wrist. Yes, this is slightly thicker than I think most people uh, want it to be, but at the end of the day, it still wears well. And a watch like this, I'm not particularly wearing with tight cuffs. So I'm not too worried about it slipping under the cuff anyway. And I find it incredibly comfortable despite the thickness. And uh, I would say, give it a chance if you've not already. So this is 30, 39 mil by 47.5 mil lug to lug. 14.5 mil on the thickness and 20 mil on the looks so at endless options, but the bracelet definitely looks killer on it. So go check it out on the website today. And from there over to the big boy, the Tudor Black Bay 41. This isn't the 58 or the 54 or any of the other ones. This is the big original 41 with the in-house movement. Um, a really, really great watch if you're after a, a sort of bigger, heavier dive watch. It ticks all those boxes. So let's take a closer look. Now on to the Tudor Black Bay 41 in-house movement and 41 obviously refers to the size which is 41 millimeters and this is the reference 79230N uh, not to be mistaken with the Black Bay 58 which is 39 millimeters or the 54 which is 37 millimeters. Um, I don't know why they called this one the 41 and the others different names but hey there you go. Um, just like the Tudor Pro we just looked at this has been worn and enjoyed there are some scratches and wear to be expected but Again, it doesn't really bother me, especially on a dive watch. I think they should have some wear, they should look a bit worn. Um, and yeah, that's just my personal take. But as always, we can have it polished up if you want on request. Now behind this closed case back, as we show you right there, is the automatic Tudor Caliber MT5602. And this watch is from May 2021 with its box and paperwork. Nice signed screw down crown at three o'clock. And this is pretty much the watch that put Tudor back on the map. Now, yes, they had their ETA before this one, which did very well for them. But once they moved over to the in-house, I think it really woke up a lot of the collectors to say, hey, we should really be paying attention to Tudor. The reason I say that is when they discontinued the ETA and bought in the new in-house, the retailers were encouraged to get rid of the ETAs as quick as possible, meaning they were offering them at large discounts out the window and people just didn't want them. Um, you know, it took a while for them all to sell. So I would argue that Tudor... Um, definitely wasn't as well known then as it is now obviously but some people seem to think the Black Bay when it first came out that was it they were on the map and they were to some degree but not to the extent of today you can only imagine that kind of reaction um, of a discontinuation today and what the market would do it would be you know everyone would be rushing to the retailers to buy them if they were offering discount well first of all they wouldn't even offer discount right so I think that's the the major change right there but anyway I'm just rambling as usual so let's show it on wrist and talk dimensions and here we go on my seven inch wrist I can totally get away with this watch size wise but it's definitely a larger dive watch so be expecting that if you're picking one of these up this is 41 mil by 50 mil lug to lug 14 mil on the thickness and 22 mil at the lugs uh, so yeah go check this one out on the website today now on to a nomos we're going to start with the zurich world timer dark blue 807 reference a very beautiful watch great value for what you get as well if you're after like a world timer gmt kind of thing this is perfect so let's take a closer look now on to the nomos zurich world timer a gorgeous watch in this dark blue tone as you can see with that nice polished case 
Crowned at 3 o'clock and Pusher at 2 o'clock, which we'll talk about in a second. This is the reference 807 from January 2021 with its box and paperwork. Nice Nomos strap with Nomos sign buckle, as you can see. Um, and as we flip it over, you've got that sort of raw leather markings of Shell Cordovan, uh, which they proudly state. I always love this on Shell Cordovans. And whilst we've got the watch flipped over, let's take a look at that gorgeous movement. Um, for the price point, I think it's very industrial in a nice way, right? Like very German. Um, and what you're looking at right there is an automatic Nomos Caliber 5201. Um, so let's talk you through what this watch actually does. So as you can see, you've got your normal running seconds, um, hour and minutes up there and a little home symbol at three o'clock showing 5 a.m. Now as we pull out the crown and start rotating you will see that home time start to move. Now what this pusher does is it will move your home hour hand and also the world timer to a uh, different time so you can set it as you wish to be able to determine what you want to uh, to see essentially. You then have a pusher down here and what that allows you to do is move just the hour hand independently of the world time bezel. So between all of that, you can set home time at uh, uh, three o'clock, uh, second time zone with your running time if you wanted to, and a third time zone with the world timer to track different times. So there's a lot going on there, but a very cool way of displaying it all. And I'm sure Nomos themselves have many um, different posts and things explaining it far better than I just did, so I apologize if that only confused you. Um, but a really great watch, especially for the price point. Even at retail, I think it's fair for what you get. So pre-owned, it just becomes an absolute steal, uh, in my opinion. So let's show it on wrist and talk dimensions. And here we go, on my seven inch wrist, one thing I will say is normal straps are always incredibly long and that fits me on the final hole, uh, which I believe that hole has actually been punctured in, but uh, I might be wrong on that, but either way, there you go. So what you're looking at in terms terms of size is 40 mil by 49 mil lug to lug, 11 mil on the thickness and 21 mil on the lugs. So a little awkward, but there are options out there, especially from brands like Watch Gecko and things like that. So go check out this gorgeous watch on the website today. And another Nomos, this time a Tangente, but not just any old Tangente in 37 millimeters. This is the Red Dot Singapore Limited Edition of 150, uh, 100 total, sorry. So a really, really limited edition and slight differences to the standard model, which is one of those, if you know, you know, which I think is quite cool. So let's take a closer look. Now onto the Nomos Tangente 37, and this is called the Red Dot Singapore Limited Edition, little red dot down at six o'clock with that beautiful red second hand as well. And as we flip it over and wipe away my fingerprints, I apologize about that. There we go. You can see at the top, uh, Singapore Limited Edition, limited to 100 pieces total. Um, so a very limited watch um, by Nomos and the specific reference is 164.S10 and that movement you just saw is their uh, manually wound Nomos Calibre Alpha as you can see and this one's from July 2020 with its box and paperwork. The wooden box, you know, they, they get a bit tired over time. The latch doesn't always catch closed perfectly, so I wouldn't recommend keeping the watch stored in there. Um, and this strap is the original Nomos strap, as you can see, with its original Nomos buckle. It's seen better days. It's definitely been worn, but for the sake of the color and matching, we've left the strap on there because straps can always be changed, so don't worry about that. Um, but as I say, July 2020, limited to 100 total. This is number 20 and a very limited watch at that. So let's show it on wrist and talk dimensions. And here we go on my seven inch wrist, a beautiful looking watch. And to be honest, I would always say size down. So if you typically go for like 40 mil on watches, get a 37 mil Nomos because the lug to lug length is very long and it's sort of, it's all dial. So they always wear bigger than their dimensions will lead you to believe. For example, this is 37 mil by 47 mil lug to lug, only 6.5 mil on the thickness and 20 mil on the lug. So endless options for swapping this one out. So go check out this awesome limited edition watch on the website today. And now we have three Unimatics on the table, all pretty much like new. These two are definitely new. The, the dinky one has been worn a couple of times, but the other two have not so let's start with the unimatic south park edition now on to the unimatic south park limited edition of 100 pieces right there as you can see <laughs> a very cool watch definitely won't be for everyone but that's why i like unimatic and their limited editions we've had the spongebob one before we've had some of their more wacky ones and this is definitely up there we've had one of these before as well and this is the south park reference u1-ec as we flip it over, you can see the South Park team proudly stated on the case back. As always, Unimatic do very nice case backs as well. 
Um, as I say, limited to 100 pieces total and inside is an automatic Seiko caliber NH35A and this watch is from circa 2023 with its box and paperwork and additional straps. Um, you can see a nice blue tip in the bezel and nice blue indices as well as hands and a matching blue almost suede leather strap with its signed buckle. This watch is unworn, uh, it's never been used, it's been sat in the box since it was purchased so it's ready to, to finally be worn and enjoyed by its new owner. Not a huge amount more to say about this, Unimatic just make really nice watches, um, very true to their design, very much the same as Ming and other watches like that. You know, you look at a Unimatic, you know it's a Unimatic, and they've done some absolutely wacky collaborations like this one, which is a lot of fun. So let's show it on wrist and talk dimensions. And here we go again, rested on my wrist because I don't want to crease that strap, and there we go, definitely a lot of fun. On the wrist, this is 41mm by 49mm lug to lug, 14mm on the thickness and 22mm at the lug. So endless options, but to be honest, this pairing really does work. So if you're after a bit of summer fun this time, this is definitely one to consider. So go check it out on the website today. From the Unimatic South Park to the Unimatic Disney and High Snobriety, I think that's how you pronounce it, a limited edition of 100 pieces. Let's take a close look at this one. Now on to the second Unimatic on the table today. Let's get this sticker off so you can actually see it. There you go. So this is the Unimatic and Disney and High Snobriety limited edition of 100 pieces total, specifically the reference U1S-HS, and you can see right there, I believe that's Mickey Mouse, um, is proudly stated on the dial. My daughter has just started watching Mickey Mouse, and she's absolutely loving it, so there you go. Um, but he's appears to be a wizard. I'm not too familiar with the whole Disney thing myself. I'm sure I will be very, very soon as my daughter gets to that age. But this is definitely a fun watch, sort of very monochromatic with all the silver, little red pip on the, the bezel, which is very nice. Screw down crown at three o'clock as you'd expect, and it's on, it's currently on is NATO. It does come with additional straps as well. Circa 2023. And there's the case back, nice and simple. Now, inside this one is an automatic Salita SW200-1. Um, so this has a Salita rather than a Seiko movement, which, to be honest, it, it doesn't really mean a huge amount, but there is some nice reassurance of having a Salita or Swiss-made movement over a Japanese movement. But to be honest, it doesn't bother me personally, but I know some people it does, so there you go. So as I say, original NATO strap, which is a blue NATO at the moment and a very cool and fun design. I would say the same as the South Park in terms of just quirkiness for like some summer fun, definitely. Um, unless you're obviously connected in some way to the importance of this one, which I know many people out there will be, especially if you have kids as well, or a strong affection uh, to Disney from, from your childhood probably. But let's show it on wrist and talk dimensions. And here we go, on my seven inch wrist, really cool proportions as you'd expect from Unimatic. This is 41 mil by 49 mil lug to lug, 13 mil on the thickness, so shave off about a millimeter total um, from switching from Seiko to Salita for the movement. So there's definitely a bonus there and 22 mil on the lugs. So a really fun watch and it kind of goes with my outfit today. So there you go. <laughs> so go check it out on the website today. And the final Unimatic on the table, one of my favorite Unimatics actually, this is the Hiding limited edition the u1-h with the gray uh, i just think it's a really good looking watch so let's take a closer look and now for the final unimatic on the table the unimatic hadinki limited edition of 500 pieces this was part of three series in three different references all limited i believe to 500 uh, for each one and this is the u1-h my favorite of the bunch with the iconic or i would argue if you're in the watch world iconic hadinki gray color scheme so the nice light gray on the inside the darker gray on the bezel it really works with this kind of case and design and this almost military style but not quite diver style it's a you have to excuse the noise in clark and well there's always some idiot on the road um it sort of combines all of the elements into one and the great work in that regard in my opinion comes on its nato strap with additional strap in the box and this one's from circa 2021 with its box and paperwork and as we have a look at the case back you can see the Hadinki uh, logo proudly stated at the bottom there and the limited edition number out of 500. Um, and inside this one is also an automatic Salita caliber SW200-1. Now I could be wrong, but I believe this uh, series of uh, Unimatics were the first to feature uh, Swiss movements with the Salita. Um, so the first have the slightly thinner case. 
could be wrong on that, but I believe that was the case, and it was one of the big points uh, between Unimatic and Hadinki. So very, very cool, but let's show on wrist and talk dimensions. And here we go on my seven inch wrist, just the same as the others in terms of wearability, but I would say um, a little bit more under the radar than the others uh, with this simple dial. So this is 41 mil by 49 mil lug to lug, 13 mil on the thickness and 22 mil on the lugs. So go check out this awesome watch on the website today. Now onto a gorgeous 1970s original blue dial Aquastar Regatta blue dial yacht timer automatic in 39 millimeters. A really wonderful watch with a very cool complication. That's just good fun. So let's take a close look. Now onto without question one of the best examples of an Aquastar yacht timer. I have personally had the privilege of selling with its original blue dial really wonderful raised indices bold hands vibrant second hand and everything else about it with the pops of sort of yellowy orange on the um, raised inner ring really really wonderful really nice case as well as you can see just overall a beautiful watch with a nice side screw down case back now the way this works is you have your continuous running second and you have a pusher up here at two o'clock when you push that it will bring the second hand round and start the countdown from 60. you saw all of the um all of the discs turned uh blue and after each minute the disc will fill to orange um, so you have a five minute countdown timer through the discs. A very unique way of telling um, or, or counting down for the yacht timer. I think it's very, very cool. Uh, how practical is it in everyday life? Not so much, but it's a cool little trick to play around with every now and again. So I would definitely recommend checking this one out and reading up on our website because we go into a lot more detail about the watch and how it works and everything like that. But behind that closed case back is an automatic Lemania Calibre 1345. Quite a complicated movement for such a simple process. Uh, and it has been serviced and comes with a warranty from that place. All the details, again, are on the website and in the photos, especially with the additional photos under points of mention. So, so, so be sure to check those out over there. Um, this one's from circa 1970s. It does come with a Lemania crown, um, which is in, uh, or sorry, Aquastar crown, which is in the box. It hasn't been fitted to the case and we haven't tried to fit it. So I don't know if it does fit, so we're not making a huge deal about that. It's just included anyway. Um, um, as standard it comes on a nice blue racing style strap with hi highlights of sort of orangey red which definitely go with the overall design especially as that starts to come through really really wonderful and not a huge amount more to say i think this is a well one the aquastar yacht timers are just great watches in general quite a bit of fun but they're getting harder and harder to find in really nice condition especially nice examples like this one it's the first time i've seen this specific one myself so let's show it on wrist and talk dimensions and here we go on my seven inch wrist it's definitely a big watch for the period uh so if you're someone who likes vintage but often finds it a bit too small this is definitely one to consider because you've got some heft to it a 39 mil by 45 mil look to look 14.5 mil on the thickness and 20 mil at the looks are endless options, but this strap pairing really works for the overall design. So go check out this beautiful watch on the website today. And last but by no means least, one of the new reference Seiko Heritage Turtles, a big step up in my opinion, and they've really refined a lot of the details and it wears beautifully and the price is great. So let's take a closer look at this and one. And here we go on to the new reference Seiko Heritage Turtle reinterpretation. They've redesigned the case, the bracelet, the thickness, everything about it and just made it more streamlined. I think Seiko are doing a very good job with their new releases of just making subtle but very significant improvements in my opinion on the design just to make wearability even better. Um, although I would argue the original turtles still wear perfectly fine but it's nice to have the options. So this is the reference SPB315J1 with the black and gilt throughout with the matte black bezel which I think is wonderful and the matte black dial contrasted against the rose gold tones throughout which again really work. Date sort of hidden away at 430 uh, and this is powered by the automatic Seiko Calibre 6R35 behind that closed case back. You can see the more flat style link bracelet um, with the heavier dutier, heavier dutier, well that's a word, heavy duty clasp right there with the dive extension at this side and two adjustments to be made on the clasp 
for a comfortable fit. This one is from February 2024, so only a couple of months old and has pretty much hardly been worn to be honest, so you can pick yourself up a near new reference at a hell of a discount on retail. So not a huge amount more to say on this one. If you're after a turtle but something a little bit smaller on the wrist, a little bit more refined, this is one to consider. So let's show it on wrist and talk dimensions. And there we go, on my seven inch wrist, you can probably see what I'm talking about in terms of refinement of size. It's just slightly better on the wrist than the previous generation. A 41 mil by 46.5 mil lug to lug, 12 mil on the thickness and 20 mil on the lugs with drilled lug holes to make strap changing. Nice and easy to go check out this one on the website today. So there you have it, 12 watches in this week's episode. As always, let me know down in the comments what was your favorite. For me, it's a tough choice between the Abel and the Rolex Cellini. I think both are wonderful, and if I was gonna go for something a bit sportier, to be honest, I'll go with the most affordable watch on the table, which is the Seiko. I think that Heritage Turtle is wonderful for the price. It looks great. It does look like a modern interpretation of a vintage watch rather than just a copy of a vintage watch, which is what I'm all about. So uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing you all again next week. As always, we've got some incredible pieces in there, including a Garrick, um, which is gonna be the first one we have sold. Big fan of that company and what they do. So very excited to bring that over to you guys, as well as many other great things as well. So we'll see you all again next week, next Saturday, 9.30 a.m. Be ready, take care, bye-bye.